And if the clerk could take the roll. <coughs> Commissioner Look. Here. Commissioner Brastad. Here. Commissioner Kordiak. Here. Commissioner Sivaraja. Here. Commissioner West. Here. Commissioner Gamash. Here. Commissioner Schulte. Here. First item is review of checks issued from Finance and Central Services and from Human Services. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. Next, we have the approval of the minutes from the September 26th County Board meeting. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Is moved and it's seconded by Commissioner Look. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. This morning, we have two items under Chair's remarks. First up is the annual report from our Veterans Service Office. Anoka County is home to almost 23,000 veterans, the fourth highest in the state. And often those who have served our country need help navigating the sometimes very complex veterans administration system to determine what benefits that they've actually earned and how to go about applying for them. And that's where our five county veteran services officers come in. I'd like to ask our veteran service director, John Kriesel, to give us an overview of the year so far. Welcome, John. Good morning, Madam Chair. Commissioners, I am excited to share our annual reports. So our mission, we're basically the one-stop shop for any veterans benefits, whether it's VA health, whether it's disability compensation, pension, anything like that. We are able to direct, whether it's homelessness issues, we will get them steered in the right direction if we're not actually physically able to help them ourselves. All right, so we provide professional caring and quality assistance to veterans and their dependents in obtaining benefits through county, state, and federal programs. Uh, including myself, we have five veteran service officers, all uh, trained yearly through the National Association of County Veteran Service Officers um, training conference. The position of County Veteran Service Officer is required by state law, and we are above and beyond by having five. Uh, we are fourth in veteran population in the state of Minnesota with 22,462 is the most recent numbers to come out. Uh, I touched on it briefly before, disability compensation, pension, uh, VA health, those are the primary benefits that visitors uh, come to our office to receive assistance with. In addition, we can help uh, with burial, uh, special needs grant if they're falling on tough financial times and then uh, dental and optical assistance for low-income veterans that need uh, assistance briefly with eyeglasses or some emergency dental work. We also work closely with the Anoka County Veterans Court, Anoka County Human Services to ensure that when someone is applying for medical assistance, if they are indeed eligible for veterans benefits, we make sure to get them to apply first, which saves the state and county dollars by making the federal government the first payer. We put out a quarterly newsletter to uh, keep local VFW posts, local veterans organizations in the loop as to any changes in uh, veterans benefits. Our statistics, we have 22,462 veterans residing in Anoka County. Last year we had 4,626 office visits. Our county veterans living within Anoka County received $154.4 million in compensation, pension, health care, education benefits. And veterans residing in Anoka County received $60,764 in assistance from the state soldiers assistance program. As I said before, if someone's behind on their mortgage or rent or anything like that to get them through that tough time. Are there any questions? Any have a, anyone have any questions or comments? Madam Chair. Commissioner. I would just say those numbers are staggering. I didn't realize we had that many veterans and $154 million plus dollars coming back to them in benefits. It's a pretty real number. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your service, John, here, here in the States and otherwise. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Brassad. Madam Chair. I just want to thank John and his staff because on a regular basis, I hear the feedback 
of the veterans going in to, you know, utilize the office, how well they're served and things are so efficient and they're very grateful and thankful that it's it's a pretty easy process. Thank you. Good job. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, thank you so much for your leadership and thank you to each of our veteran service officers as well for their service, uh, not only to our country, but to other veterans within the office. So again, thank you so much. Thank you. Our second item is a report on the recent deployment to Florida by a 16-member team of emergency responders, including Anoka County's Emergency Management Director, Terry Stoltzman. I'm sure most of us saw the news reports of the devastation that resulted when Hurricane Irma slammed into the Florida Keys. But television can't convey the true scope of the damage and all the work that was going on really behind the scenes to get basic services up and running. Terry and the rest of the team from Minnesota were deployed to one of the hardest hit areas in the Keys, and it gave them a really unique opportunity to make a difference. So Terry, if you could give us a brief overview of your experience and how missions like this really help Anoka County. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, my name is Terry Stoltzman, your Emergency Management Director for the county. Thank you on behalf of myself, Volunteer Ralph Beerbaum, and really the rest of the team uh, for being able to represent both Anoka County and the state of Minnesota on this mission. Very important mission because what it means for Anoka County is training, really understanding how these disasters, very complex ones, work. And what we're doing back home is either working or not working, and pretty much it's working here in Anoka County. But the things that we get thrown at in these disasters are really outside the box. Nothing that you would ever train for, nothing that you could expect. You really have to be on your toes. The only way we can do that is go on these missions. Also, emergency management is very unique in the United States where we receive some money from the federal government to have these local programs, such as mine and, and, and yours in Anoka County. Um, we, we don't have an expectation that we're always going to go, but it's one of those implied things like if there's a disaster somewhere in the United States that need, they need help, are you going to go? And so that's a question I ask the board and administration every year. If it happens in the state, are we going to go or outside the state? And consistently, it's been yes and yes because we're a county that wants to help the citizens no matter where they are. So thank you again for that opportunity. Emergency Management Assistance Compact is how we go state to state. Uh, as you were told, 16 members. A number of counties that is really quickly, Anoka, Hennepin, Itasca, Olmstead, Scott, and Stearns were the counties that participated in this deployment, so really across the state. Uh, the cities, uh, also Atlanta Hospitals, Brainerd, Chaska, Eden Prairie, Excelsior, Fridley, John Berg, Fridley Fire Chief went along. New Brighton, uh, all the southeast Minnesota counties, they had a planning uh, person that went. We were, went, we were assigned to go to Florida, we're, and it was kind of a nebulous, we are going to go to the Tallahassee State Emergency Operations Center because all of Florida was affected. And so in doing that, we, we began our journey to Florida. We didn't know exactly where we'd end up. Florida's a very big state, as you can see, and I probably visited. There's a, it's a wide encompassing, surrounded by water. Um, Took a while to get there, we had to drive. The flights were not an option. They were closing down airports in anticipation of landfall. So uh, while we were in Birmingham, held up because of the storm, uh, it was 9-11. We were doing a tabletop exercise because we're always in training mode, thinking about what we're gonna do down in Florida. We got the phone call to go to the Keys. Uh, did not know the Keys are all one county. About 73,000 people, Monroe County is the county. And it's surrounded, as you can see, by water if you visit it. I had never been to uh, the keys before so it was a first time experience for me to go down that far uh, not a very big county as far as uh, government population but they have a lot of big projects as you can know they have 40 some bridges that need to be inspected the aqueducts there's a lot of infrastructure the reason we went to the keys is we got a, a satellite call we being the state EOC in Tallahassee from Key West it said send help that was it they, they had no way of understanding exactly what was going on there. They couldn't get through with the bridges. The infrastructure was down. So think of a, a world with no power, no way to transport yourself. You can't go to the grocery store. There, there are none. You can't go to the bank to get money because there is no banks. Nothing's functioning. So it's the basic needs, as, as Commissioner Sivaraj was talking about, are going to be important for the, the public. This is what an emergency operations center looks like and probably... Day four is a very, it's a room a little bit larger than this room, occupied from people all over the nation that were coming to assist because no one county, no one city can do it on their own. 
And that's the good news, one of the lessons learned for Anoka County. If we get hit with something catastrophic, large straight line wind event, large tornado complex that destroys many cities or impacts many cities, this thing can happen and we can, we can get assistance from other jurisdictions, including all over the nation, whatever we need, doing search and rescue, medical, so forth. This is a really profound picture for me. This is their hospital in the city of Marathon right across the Monroe <coughs> County Emergency Operations Center, destroyed. All the hospitals became inoperable all throughout the Keys. The first day on the ground for me was nothing but medical flights from Key West transporting people to the mainland. And we had to have disaster medical assistance teams or DMATs. This one happened to be from Boston. They were set up at the City Hall in Marathon providing you know, hospital services out of a tent off a generator. So think of not being able to go to urgent care or hospital. You have to you know, get all alternate type of services. Maps are kind of hard to read, but we worked out of a location <coughs> called Pod. So the blue tabs, as you can see the keys are kind of lying there all the way from mile marker 113 is the end of the keys all the way down to zero, US one. And so we had seven points of distribution for that all affect the population. Some people sheltered and didn't evacuate like others did. So we had to make sure we provided the basics. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna sh show you one of those points of distribution. I could have a thousand stories, we could be here for hours, but that's not good for your timing. So I'm gonna show you a quick video. Of what Key West looked like within a day of the storm going away. This is a parking lot. To be cut foods, this is Publix. You have a helicopter landing in one, any one of your cities that you represent, and it's being distributed by citizens on the ground, police, National Guard members off a helicopter, food and water. And the reason I show the video is because it's impact. I mean, I can't imagine a world where this is kind of a reality in the United States that it was in Key West and many other locations in the country. Um, it just is one of those things you have to think, like I said, outside that box a little bit. So you saw the helicopter. This is hours after the helicopter left. I'm just gonna go through a couple slides. You can see the progression and that's kind of the key is it, everything starts with that grassroots effort. The citizens, and government working together to get things accomplished. And that's really what the seven points of dispensing were all about, and this is pod five, just the progression. You can see within the first hours, the lines of people, <coughs> the citizens who didn't evacuate, needing assistance. Not just the citizens, but also first responders who were there protecting infrastructure. There's deputies we found along the routes that hadn't eaten in two, three days, getting food and water for the first time. So just the human story, um, but then you can see how we advance. Now we have many trucks of supplies coming from Homestead. Supplies came from the state and federal government, and coordination is what we did to get all these resources in place. You see the porta potties in the foreground. You see other uh, box trucks. Very orderly. Um, it wasn't chaos. It was very coordinated amongst the citizens and, and government partners, non-government partners. It was really a community effort. There are no sign shops. You have to create your own. You kind of have to think <laughs> outside the box. Uh, so we've di distributed food water 12 to 6. It wasn't a firm 12, hey, we're closed or we're not open yet. It was pretty much all the time, but the bulk of the work. So we had to staff these, these points of distribution, usually around 8 in the morning. And it was, took a while for the teams to come from Marathon down to Key West to get there. More and more, but of course, civilization. Once we start breaking apart stuff, we have dumpsters that we don't have. We have garbage needs. So you have no services. So how do you get that? You have to coordinate all of that fuel for generators, getting forklifts that don't exist in a parking lot in your community. You have to do all that coordination. This is the most important thing. This is what we distributed. Uh, meals ready to eat, comes in packages. Everybody ate these. I ate these, citizens ate these, responders. Water in either bottle or by can. This is from Anheuser-Busch out of St. Louis. They stopped the production of beer, an American commodity, to make sure that we put water into the hands of those that need. We give people these boxes. In this box is uh, cereal, milk, and, and a, a container breakfast bar, raisins, fruit cups, bread, things that are shelf stable that can sit out in the sun. And they would take those and we distribute those every day. But inside that box is this sign. These meals are put together for fellow Americans. And that's really what it's about is the community. Each one of those boxes had that in there. Uh, this is me working out of my command trailer where I was. I was fortunate where I didn't have to spend all my time in the field. I was placed into a logistics section 
and dealt directly with these points of dispensing. And the, the points of dispensing uh, look kind of like this on paper. We kind of had to create a framework. Uh, we worked out of a Miami-Dade uh, trailer that was purchased with uh, urban area dollars, and we're familiar with urban area dollars here in this count, the county. Uh, Miami-Dade gets millions, so they had a very nice command trailer that we used. But we opened these points of dispensing, and you see there's National Guard troops or MNIMT or IMT members that were there, and then some other volunteer groups. But it was very logistically intense. A lot of partners, and I don't want to forget our partners, from the power companies to the Home Depot truck that we retasked for three days because it had a forklift on the back and we could do mobile dispensing to neighborhoods because not everybody can come to your point of dispensing, and then our state partners. Uh, it's really all about the team effort. Uh, just the last picture there of the team minus uh, Ralph Bierbaum who got dropped off in Orlando because his vacation overlap. But just real quick, a couple lessons learned. Training counts. Really flexibility at all levels of government is really important. Um, from the field to the distant points of government and the highest elected offices, it's a must. Uh, you must think outside the box always. Making it happen is the most important. Uh, more than just immediately around you, you have to think bigger than that. Uh, basic needs, food, water, shelter, general commodities, baby formula, diapers, personal hygiene, and other small comfort items. The biggest lesson learned from this one, give to your charity of choice. Give money, give only money, or your time as a volunteer. Do not and resist the urge to donate physical <coughs> items of any type. Uh, this becomes a huge crippling uh, part of the response that puts burden on responders, citizens already affected by the disaster, and other volunteer groups because they have to find transportation, storage and distribution networks to manage and distribute those items that you want to donate that are physical in nature. It becomes a big problem it was this, this one also. So resist that urge. And if you're a citizen, communicate your need. As you see responders, talk to us. The Keys did. They let us know what their needs are. But for our citizens in Anoka County, if you have needs, look for those helpers. As my uh, idol, Mr. Rogers, uh, would say, look for the helpers. They're always out there helping. Uh, Citizens Keys did that. They were very grateful, and our team saw that every day when they were in the field. They got to uh, know the faces and became familiar when friendships form in the Keys community, you know, and the, really the Concord public, as you know, grew. You know, we're, we're members of their family. Partners come in all varieties, government, non-government, private businesses, and the citizens themselves. Remember, it's all about the community, and I'll entertain any questions that you may have. Does anyone have any questions at all? Hi, Terry. Thanks for the presentation. It was very interesting, but I, I had a question come to my mind watching you guys sitting there with those coconuts. Did they cause a lot of damage? I mean, were there so many coconuts around that you can even identify that? Or it's, uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner, uh, the coconuts were probably a little bit of a problem because they become flying objects, but really one of my team members thought it'd be nice to have a memento, a legal one, <laughs> no, to make sure that we brought back to remember our, our time and, and the keys and the coconuts were everywhere. Also, iguanas, if you've been in the keys, they're overrun with iguanas. We weren't going to bring an iguana. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the coconuts, other materials, but the place that we stayed, and I, like I said, I have a million stories, was a, was a condo that happened to have an empty one, and the caretaker says, why don't you use that? Had no power, so we had to climb the stairs, you know, provide our own power and lighting. So we had a place to stay, but we ate these same meals, had the same environment that the citizens did. We didn't have creature comforts that, that you would expect today. And that's the biggest lesson is world changes. You know, if we were, were in a counter, unfortunately, something bad happened. You see it in Las Vegas, out west with the fires right now, with the hurricanes. Puerto Rico is way worse than we saw in the Keys. But if that were ever to happen in Minnesota for whatever disaster, I think we're very prepared, but we're going to need a lot of help. We're going to need a lot of support at all levels. Well, thank you so much, Terry, and your entire team for all the work that you did in Florida and just showing our fellow Americans that we really care. And it doesn't matter where it is that you live, that we're going to be there to support you and help you. So thank you for doing that. Thank we you. appreciate it. Okay, now we will move on to committee reports, beginning with the Management <coughs> Committee. Commissioner West. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we have a couple positions to <coughs> decide on. The first, the Management Committee recommends approving two new positions there. One FTE dispatcher, grade 209, and they're in the Administration Central Communications 911 Department. 
and the other is uh, position in human services, social services in behavioral health, non-budgeted and contingent upon home and community-based services waiver. Uh, it is the 1FTE case aid specialist grade 10. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Brasted. Aye. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Lung. Aye. And then, Madam Chair, we I have a, a management committee chair report. Mm -hmm. And for a new position also, again, in central communications, in our higher head non-budgeted um, position, it's one FTE dispatcher, one grade 209, again. Uh, actually, that's a second, but. We'll, we'll yeah. go ahead and take that one yeah. first, and then we'll go back to number one. Um, so is there a motion to approve the additional dispatcher position? So moved. Oh. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Brass and second by Commissioner Schulte. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. And uh, Madam Chair, back to the first. I'm sorry, I missed it. Um, it's a consent agenda, which is a travel request uh, by four uh, forensic pathologists. Is there a motion to approve? Moved. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Motion carries. And the rest is informational from the first section, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner West. Now we'll move on to Transportation Committee report. Commissioner Schulte. Thank you, Madam Chair. Our committee had the opportunity to meet on Monday, October 2nd here in the Government Center. We have one action item for you today and one informational item I'd like to point out. First, uh, the committee would recommend approval of a request for a speed zone study on Rum River Boulevard from Bridge Street to a point approximately 1.1 miles north of the city of St. Francis. So moved. Okay, resolution has been offered by Commissioner Look. Further discussion? Madam Chair. I would just comment that this was requested by the city of St. Francis through their city council. Okay, thank you. First one. And all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carried. And Madam Chair, for the record, uh, item number one was pulled from the agenda. Uh, that agreement is not quite ready with uh, the state of Minnesota just yet. Uh, under informational items, I'd like to point out uh, item number four that the committee has directed uh, our staff to do a value engineering study on the uh, one of our Highway 10 projects from Fair Oak and Thurston. Uh, we have a fairly high confidence level that that would move us up the ranking as far as uh, grant applications are concerned. So we've, uh, we've asked them to get that study started as quick as possible and so we can include that with our grant applications. With that, that does conclude my report. Thank you. Then we'll move on to Information Technology Committee report. Commissioner Gamash. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, at our last meeting, we only had informational items on the agenda, but uh, one of them is very, one of them is very, very important because we have wrapped up the Unified Communications update. Uh, for the most part, everyone's got their new phone line, <coughs> got their new phone, and their new number. And I, I, I just want to say, as Susan steps up to the podium, I just want to say thank you to. All the, in, all the people in IT who worked uh, diligently over the many, many months of uh, finishing this project. I was just looking back as Susan provided me earlier from our spring newsletter and a quote from Commissioner Look about how the work that we were getting ready to start doing. Well, here it is October and we're done. So it's, it's great and it's gonna be great for um, the entire, all the people in the county. And I wanna thank the people of the county that aren't involved in IT because they're the ones that had to struggle through new phone numbers, through new phones, and they were great. Uh, for they, they were patient with what was going on because it's a big change. It's not something that's uh, done overnight and they were very patient and I want to thank them for that as well. Um, there's more to come. Uh, there's <coughs> things that will be happening including video conferencing, uh, conferencing now which is going to be very exciting. Uh, one of the things with Anoka County where we have so many different buildings across the county where people work, 
Uh, now you won't have those issues possibly where people have to travel across the county for a meeting. It can be right on your computer. You can see the PowerPoint presentation. You can look at the Excel documents from whomever and have it right there at your computer and, par and participate in the meeting. So it's a time saver as well as, uh, uh, as all the other things that we're gonna get from it. But I will let Susan uh, have a few minutes because this was a big project and they're very, they're very um, uh, proud of what they've done and I'm very proud of what they've done. So I'll give Susan a few minutes to talk a little bit about it and answer any questions anyone might have. Certainly, thank you, um, Madam Chair, members of the county board. I'm Susan Greeland, um, your county IT director. Um, we're excited, we still have work to get done, but we've, we've certainly climbed a hill um, we knew over the last couple of years that in planning the county's phone system, we had, we had some work to do. Um, the, the current telecom system, old telecom system, um, the components and parts were anywhere from 12 to 25 years old. Um, maintaining it wasn't cost effective. It was actually costing us more to try to continue to keep that up. Parts were becoming hard to find. Um, you know when you're looking on eBay and you can't find it, you got a problem. So we wanted to be proactive. We didn't want to just take a leap and make a big investment. And we wanted to take a look at what does the county currently own from an infrastructure perspective that we can take advantage of? What can we hop onto? Um, we knew that a term called unified communications, you've heard it quite a bit, gives us the ability to take advantage of investments that we've already made. Um, the county's network, um, our server infrastructure, um, our routers and our switches, and the county's fiber network. Um, that technology gives us the, avail the ability now um, to carry telecom presence and calls over all of that versus filling up another room with a whole bunch of phone equipment. Um, so we went down that road, we went through the RFP process, um, we selected the most, I think, responsible vendor and started down that road. Um, some of the statistics in front of you now, a total of um, 40 closet switches and 16 routers were replaced. Um, that was needed for the new phone system, but that's also, um, again, equipment we can use now to carry county data. So that's equipment that I won't need to replace that can serve another function. Um, a total of 2,242 telephones replaced in 49 county facilities over the term of about three months, three and a half months. Um, and then 150 to 160 call flows. What is a call flow? Um, it's a big chart, as you can see in front of you, that looks like a lot of kind of gobbledygook. But what that is is our staff sitting down with every division and department and saying, how do you work with your constituents and clients right now? How do you meet? How do you process getting them to the right person? And it's us sitting down, then we go back and kind of architect what the new system needs to look like, and then we go back and do it again. And you can't read some of that because some of them go pages and pages. Um, but what it gave us the opportunity to do is, there's a lot of back and forth there, but a lot of our entities sat down and said, how do we do our business now? And can we use this technology to maybe be more efficient in how we get one person to the next? And so it was exciting to see uh, many of our departments when they could take advantage of that. Um, so again, immediate benefits. Um, we replaced quite a bit of infrastructure that we can reuse for other things. Um, again, same equipment being reused in other areas. For our users, um, new phones, a great benefit there. Desktop sharing is something we implemented right away. So if I need to work with somebody at Lino on a document, I'm not emailing back and forth, I'm not driving out there. I can click a button and say, take a look at what we're working on. And there's that immediate presence to be collaborating without driving somewhere. Um, we've gotten some really positive feedback on that. Secure instant messaging and presence. Um, so a lot of people go, well, I can I am at home. What's the big deal about that? Based on the nature of the data that we transport, um, we've got a lot of entities that have to securely have that transfer of checking in with somebody very securely. That came with what we purchased, um, so we were able to put that in place right away. Also presence notification um, from one click on my desktop. If I wanted to contact Mr. Soma, I can see, I can instant message him securely, I can see if he's available in the, in the office. I can also call him from my desktop and do all of that in one click, so some time savings there. Um, what do we have coming next? Video conferencing and conference now. We're going to have much more ability to conference back and forth um, from the desktop, from conference <clears throat> rooms. We have some capability for that now. We're working with um, the communications group to further enhance that with the licensing that we have. And something that the county has worked towards for a long time that is part of what um, we've entered into is an emergency notification system. Um, you know, Terry Stoltzman spoke um, earlier about some of the the issues with the world we live in today, and we know there's challenges um, with many things in public buildings. And so we're working with um, the sheriff's office, facilities, and other entities 
um, to see based on what's available to us now, how do we bring that technology as a part of this communication system into the county and into county buildings. So um, a lot has, has happened. There's more to come. We're very excited. Um, but I want to thank um, the IT committee, Jerry Soma, um, the entire county board, um, and our users. Everyone's been very patient. Um, this is a big investment, but I think I, I'm already seeing the payback, and, and I, I look forward to reporting more as to how this investment will further benefit um, the mission of the county. So thank you to all of you. Thank you, Susan, and uh, to your team. Thanks so much for all the work they did on it. And uh, I do want to thank the county board because we put the money there and said, yes, this is something we need to get done. And uh, so we, we went ahead with it. And, and uh, Susan's team led the charge into, um, I mean, if you look at all the different departments that we affected and the fact that a lot of call centers where people were coming, calling in to get their services, um, expecting to be able to get through. And um, I don't think we had too many glitches. So I want to I want to thank your team, who um, obviously did a much better job than the state of Minnesota does on computer projects. So um, good thank job. You, and and, um, and maybe, maybe there should be a call from the governor wondering how we do it here in Anoka County. But. <laughs> Only if we get to develop it ourselves. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. We also had a little discussion about SharePoint, which is moving along um, well uh, as well, and I'm very happy with that. So, um, and we also had another discussion a little bit about budgets, which we always keep at the at the forefront of our mind um, with all the costs that go on, especially with IT. But, uh, Madam Chair, that's my report. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for your great work. And I think we would be remiss if we didn't thank the citizens as well for their patience, because I know that all of these telephone numbers have changed, and <laughs> people become accustomed to using certain telephone numbers, and it's really difficult to all of a sudden remember a new phone number um, or try to figure out how it is that you, you get those get to the right person. So again, appreciate the patience of our citizens as well. And again, thanks to your team for your great work. Thank you. Now we will move on to internal audit committee report. Commissioner Lark. Madam Chair, thank you. The uh, internal audit committee met on September 28th. And uh, we didn't have any action items, but we were given um, uh, verbal updates on the limited audits that were done for the parks. IT and the property records and uh, taxation departments. And um, it's always good to have these uh, updates. Uh, you know, Chuck does a great job of kind of fine tooth combing some of these departments. While they may not necessarily like that, uh, it's good because um, it's valuable to make sure that the, pro the pro procedures and the policies are best management practices. If there needs to be some strengthening of controls, we can do that and to ensure that. Uh, that everything is done appropriately. Uh, the one thing I did want to bring everyone's attention to is item number four, which was a verbal update on a conflict of interest uh, questionnaire. We, uh, we are one of two counties that we know for sure uh, that do a conflict of interest uh, questionnaire. There may be others, a Hennepin County and Anoka County. And uh, essentially there's 300, 350 some employees, employees that meet a certain criteria that can commit the county to a contract or a purchase order or something of that nature. Uh, we require a, um, a questionnaire that they fill out to ensure that there isn't a conflict of interest. For example, a family member uh, has a company that serves an area that they're writing a purchase order for or something like this. And, um, and essentially um, what this does is it increases transparency, makes sure that uh, you know, everything is, is done appropriately. There's no, um, no conflicts in that regard. I know county commissioners have to fill that out, but we have other employees do that as well. And, um, and uh, that was um, the results of that, uh, were that there was no revealed potential conflicts of interest at all. So kind of interesting on that note. But aside from that, that concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner. Now we'll move on to Parks and Community Services Committee report. Commissioner Kordiak. Thank you, Madam Chair. I might invite John forward. I think I can kind of handle these, though. Item number one is a project that we're, uh, we're, we're aware of. This is the Bunker Hills activity center water and sewer connection. Kind of a regrettable expense, but important addition. Reckon that the water there is uh, not able to be used by the public, and uh, that's been an issue for a long time. And admittedly, between the um, well water and the septic tanks, it's time to transition to sewer water uh, at that location. 
we're prepared to do that. We went out for bids. We had several contractors. We're satisfied with the one that we have that was well within our bid proposal. And I'd like to suggest, ma'am, here that we award a contract to Northdale Construction for 177.507.87. Is there a motion? Move it. Okay, it's been moved. Second. All right, second. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Motion <coughs> carries. Next item. Well, if the water sewer is coming in from the north and we have a project going in the same building in the south, this is a project that we've been working on for some time. This is an expansion of the Bunker Hills Activity Center. It's the outdoor gathering area uh, for rather large events and weddings and a variety of things. Uh, we're working with the Metropolitan Council and the Legacy Grant to pay, to pay for the cost of this. Uh, so we're eager to move the project forward. This would authorize, this action, Madam Chair, would authorize the County Board to enter into a Legacy Agreement Grant Agreement with the Metropolitan Council. Is there a motion to approve? I move it. Second. Been moved by Commissioner Gamash, second by Commissioner West. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner Kordiak? Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Motion carries. Next item. Uh, similarly, ma'am, Chair, this is a project going on at the Mississippi West Regional Park. Can you remind me, John, uh, what specifically we're doing in this uh, par park improvement here with these dollars? Sure, I'd be happy to. Thank you, Commissioner Kordiak, Madam Chair, members of the County Board. For the record, I'm John Bondalindi, your uh, Division Manager for Parks and Community Services. Uh, this project entails the completion of the Mississippi River Regional Trail from the east end of Mississippi West Regional Park in Ramsey to the west end of the park. And it's an important connecting piece. Uh, we know that the city of Elk River, uh, I'm sorry, Ramsey will be completing the trail from the west end of the park up to Elk River within the next couple of years. And that will complete the entire Mississippi River Regional Trail from Elk River all the way down to Minneapolis. So it's an important component. Uh, the dollars that are in this agreement are the result of savings that we had in our fiscal year 2015 Park and Trail Legacy Program. Uh, we ended up with the uh, coming in at about $244,000 under our expected budget as a result of good planning by our staff and, and uh, conscientious management of those projects. So those dollars would be reallocated to this project and they would be matched with other federal dollars that we've already retained for this project. Um, and so that's the nature of the agreement and the scope of work involved in the project. Is there a motion to approve? I'll move it. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Comment, Madam Chair, that, that, that ranks to see this one move forward. I'm sure that Commissioner Look and his constituents are going to appreciate that. And um, it's going to be a nice addition, and it's going to be a pretty area there. Thank you. And, and so the timeline is next year? That is correct, Madam Chair. Wonderful. All right, roll call vote. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Motion carries. Next item. Madam Chair, this is a resolution regarding a accepting donation of, uh, of $50 from Nancy Medicine for the Bunker Hill Regional Park System. I'll move it. Okay, resolution's been offered by Commissioner Kordiak. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner Kordiak? Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Motion carries. Next item. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is an, an item here that's been coming forward to the County Board for a very long time. Uh, this is the annual uh, relationship uh, with the DNR regarding the uh, funding of, uh, of cross-country skiing activities, obviously Noka County grooms about, what was it, about, 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 about for the past 30 years, many miles of grooming trails. Uh, we received the dollars, we used the dollars to, to prepare trails for their wintertime utilization and uh, make it safe and beneficial for skiers in the area. Is there a motion to approve? Madam Chair, seeing as it was 32 degrees this morning, I'll move it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Madam Chair? Yes. I would just say it's a sure sign of winter coming that this is being approved, but more so the fact that Commissioner Look is growing a beard. <laughs> <laughs> Real sign. 
All right, roll call vote. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Motion carries. Next item. Thank you, Chair. And similarly, but in a different vein, somewhat, this is a uh, the annual snowmobile grant agreements that Anoka County utilized the working with the DNR once again to utilize those dollars to work with three snowmobile clubs. Basically, where the, uh, the, the, the source of money comes from, it goes out to them. They prepare and groom and trap, prep and treat these trails ways for the summertime or for the, win the wintertime. Uh, we make sure that they're done in accordance with state uh, requirements and ensure that their maintenance of those trails are safe and secure. Uh, I'll offer. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Sivaraja? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner Cordia? Aye. <coughs> Motion carried. In front of Madam Chair, the last items are for information purposes only and there be a review. That would conclude our report. Thank you. Thank you, John. And our final item is to consider amending contract C0003596 with health partners to add an additional 0.6 nurse practitioner to our well at work clinic to provide for the growing demand for services as recommended by the responsible commissioner, which is myself. And this would um, be an additional staff cost of about 111,000 and one would work Monday through Thursday and the other one would work Tuesday through Friday. So that would cover um, those costs. And the benefit to us is that hopefully it helps in bringing down our insurance rates because those services are not included as encounter data within the health plan that we currently have. So there is a benefit, but also the savings um, that we would realize would be in less staff time, um, less absenteeism and so forth. So we estimate um, that the savings is anywhere from 210,000 to 421,000. So definitely a great return on investment. So I would move approval for a okay. second. Further discussion? Madam Chair, I just have a quick question. For people to use that, then they would be um, Anoka County employees that are on the insurance plan. And their families. And their families. So if you have a husband and wife and the husband doesn't work for Anoka County and they have a split plan, he takes insurance from his company and she takes insurance from her company so they don't have a family, he can't come in, but she can come in. Right. If okay. you are on our insurance. Got to be on our insurance then you could utilize that. Thank you. I can access that. Thank you. No, that's a good plan. Excellent. All right. Madam Chair, I'll just, I'll just note my family went in for flu shots, and uh, Jana has a technique where you don't even feel it, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not. And uh, they were just amazed. She's, she's wonderful, and I'm sure the new person coming in will be trained in well and be wonderful as well. So. <laughs> Very good. Did you have anything to add to that? Okay. All right. Uh, roll call vote. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner Kordiak. Aye. Commissioner Sivaraja. Aye. Motion carries. And with that, our meeting is adjourned.